Good evening. You're about to witness professional comedians go mic to mic in a brutal war of words. But first, a warning. If you're easily offended of a nervous disposition or dislike confrontation, then maybe you should, I don't know, man the fuck up. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Carr. Welcome to Roast Battle. the show. They say sticks and stones may break your bones, but being called a fat pedo nonce on national television <laughs> will definitely hurt you. <laughs> Helping decide our winners tonight are my fellow judges, Catherine Ryan and Jonathan Ross. Jonathan likes to think of himself as an innovative, free-thinking TV maverick and fashion icon, whilst the rest of us like to think of him as Bradley Walsh, but with longer hair. <laughs> that might be the meanest thing I've ever said. <laughs> I just hope Bradley Walsh can forgive me. <laughs> Jonathan stopped drinking alcohol for ten years, although, sadly, no-one told his haggard old face. <laughs> Jonathan Ross, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Carr, if Carlsberg made cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Carr to work out what look Jimmy's going for. I think he's trying... He's modelled himself on Pinocchio's grinder image. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Ryan. Catherine has an interesting face. She looks like a show pony that got its magic wish to be human. <laughs> Catherine is unlucky in love, but not as unlucky as the hundreds of men she's given herpes. <laughs> Thank you for saying it was only hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> OK, before we get on with our first battle, time to welcome the man keeping order. It's the referee that runs the roast. It's Brian Moses! <laughs> First up, we have Darren Harriet and Tom Ward. It's hard to get to know Darren. He's very cagey, very frosty. Yeah, I know Tom. He, he's a nice guy. He's a vegan as well, so I don't really sort of hug him or fist bump. I don't want to hurt him. What's the main difference between me and Darren? I don't feel the need to wear skin-tight clothes to feel like a man. The main difference between me and Tom? Um, oh. Uh, melanin. Okay, if this is a fist fight, there'd be no contest. It's Doorman versus Vegan, Brummy Boy versus Mummy's Boy, Tragic Backstory versus Even More Tragic Haircut. Give it up for Darren Harriet! <laughs> and Tom the Sight Boy! <laughs> Gentlemen, here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes each. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, can everyone please stop asking if me and Darren are related? <laughs> We're not. We're dating. <laughs> Jimmy, who do you want to see go first? Darren, you're at a huge advantage this evening because you're roasting that. <laughs> I mean, no offense, but what the actual fuck? <laughs> It's like a, it's like a life-size Playmobil man. I mean... You've probably seen yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I look more like a Lego man, your Playmobil. There's a real rivalry. <laughs> it always ends in sex, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe not. All right, bad start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love the look, but... I, and also, well, Darren used to be a bouncer, so it's fun to make him wait around for a change. <laughs> I, I think Tom should go first. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's 
It's great to be paired up with Darren. I've always wondered what it's like to be a cool, charismatic black guy. And I know that Darren wonders that too. <laughs> I'm joking, man. You look great. The, the clothes, the body, the teeth. You look like a, a, a racist character act played by Rob Beckett. <laughs> you, John Lennon. <laughs> Tom is such a weak, emasculated man. Even when you fuck, you wear a strap on. Jeez. Darren was a bouncer for 10 years in Birmingham, which is where he got both of his stories from. <laughs> All right, Mumford and cunts. Well, your mum gave me five stars. Tom, where's your accordion? <laughs> very nice, Darren. He's very much style over substance, though, aren't you? Sort of like a bleached asshole. <laughs> Look fantastic, sure. It's still the same old shit coming out, though, isn't it? <laughs> Tom comes from New Malden. New Malden has the highest population of North and South Koreans in the country, which explains his shit haircut. <laughs> You're trying to be their new leader. <laughs> Let's go. Cheers, Darren. Good to, uh, good to spend time with you. <laughs> Darren's a very mainstream act, though he does appeal to uh, minority groups as well. They're LGBT queuing round the block to say, why is this dick splat on TV? <laughs> and he's black too, in so many ways. That's the personality of a black hole. <laughs> All the charm of the black death. <laughs> and he really puts the cunt into black country. You're such a vegan, even your head's shaped like a mushroom. <laughs> you dress like you won bonus clothes on Grand Theft Auto. Hey! I see it for Tom and Darren! How did that happen, Darren? Whoa, let's walk over here. Come on over. Jimmy, Jonathan, Carrington, who do you like, the Lego or the Negro? <laughs> I like you, baby. Um, the, I mean, obviously, the question I think everyone's asking is, uh, is where is your accordion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, right, that got nothing. What the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> what was it? What was I meant to get? What was it meant to be? Uh, like, a, like, it looks like you should play an accordion. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, sometimes it's nice to do all the words in the sentence, not just the end yeah. bit. <laughs> I thought that was an exceptional roast. I mean, really, really good. Some brutal, awful jokes. I I'm going to the judges, see what they think. I mean, I agree. They were super, super brutal. And Darren, you waited until the second joke to make fun of Tom's hair. And that showed incredible restraint on your part, I thought. <laughs> I know Tom, he looks very familiar to me, I thought, until I remembered I was helping Jonathan Google uh, top 50 hairstyles for the older woman earlier. <laughs> I do think Tom looks like he does have the look of a quite I mean no 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 offense meant in this actually quite a compliment. I think you look like a, a sexy dinner lady. <laughs> you Jonathan, what did you make of this? I loved you. Tom, you had me at bleached arsehole. And I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure people have said that to you before. Darren coming back while well, saying that when he's having sex he, he wears a strap on. Mm, who which I, I I enjoyed it, but also I'm curious how you know that, Darren. I was like, <laughs> which, I mean, where was his accordion when you did <laughs> it? <laughs> OK, so who have you got for the, for the win here? I mean, I loved, I've got to say, though, I loved the Grand Theft Auto reference when you mm. said, yeah, that was uh, so spot on, and that kind of really won me over there, but... Bonus I, clothes. I want to hear what, um, what um, uh, Jimmy goes with first. Presumably you're going to go with the white guy because you're a racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> uh, I thought you both had great lines, but I'm going to give it to Tom. as well. Um, for me, it comes down to the last joke, so my winner is Darren. What a nice, babe. Tied up. 
Uh, it was so super close, I almost don't want to call it, but the Grand Theft Auto reference was amazing. So I'm afraid I'm going to give it to Darren, but I loved you as well. Yeah! yeah! Ready for another battle? Yeah. Oh, dear, Brian. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, next up we have Larry Dean and Tom Allen. Yeah. Yes. I prepare for a battle like this by doing quite a lot of training. I go to see a trainer three times a week. He makes me put boxing gloves on, I say witty remarks, and then he punches me in the face. I don't want to be nasty to him because he seems so nice. My strategy, just pick on the way he looks. He looks weird, that. He looks like a music teacher who cries when he gets angry. He's quite a cool gay, I would say. I'm scared that he'll be too cool for me, and even my blazer won't be able to protect me. from opposite ends of the rectum. Give it up for Larry Dean! <laughs> and Tom Allen! Yes! Oh, Thomas. Here are your rules, gentlemen. Rule one, five jokes each. Rule two, nothing is off limits, except for physical contact, please. And rule three, no scratching, no slapping, no hair pulling, or masturbating. That's for you, Jimmy. I can't make any promises. Who do you want to go first, Jim? Uh, well, you're both, you're both gay men, but Tom has the decency to let people know from 400 paces. <laughs> You wanna, if you want to be in with a chance, you've got to get in early. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I, we should let Larry go first, because he's a 28-year-old Glaswegian. He hasn't got long left. <laughs> <laughs> You're first, Larry. Are you ready? Yeah, man. Are we ready? Yeah! Go I, I just want to clarify that I love Tom. And if you don't know him, you can actually tell a lot about Tom just by looking at him. Whether it's his status in the comedy industry or his sex life, Tom's the bottom. <laughs> is it my go? Is it my go now? How does it work? I don't know. <laughs> this is what it's like for gay people. We're very considerate. <laughs> when we're fucking each other. Now, <laughs> Larry, you look like the only time you've used Grinder is when you've been working down a shipyard. <laughs> I mean, Larry looks like he learned how to be gay in prison. I mean, shower sex on D-Wing to him was what finishing school was to Princess Grace of Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Grace with a machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> like tonight, Tom is always very well groomed, just like all the boys he meets online. <laughs> Tom dresses to kill, which is why I know for a fact he's currently wearing a condom with a hole in it. <laughs> 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 now, Larry, I've stared at you for long enough. I have to make some changes, I'm afraid. Uh, please, uh, make yourself better by put on this, putting on this neckerchief. Even though it's basically grey, it might still brighten your pallid expression. <laughs> and also, um, I brought you some eye cream. I think you should put it under your eyes. Those dark circles, they remind me of looking in a bin outside a kebab shop. <laughs> <laughs> Also, before you ask, yes, I do have some spare change, and I don't mind if you spend it on drugs, as long as it's a sanatogen multivitamin. <laughs> I've never even fucking... Is that a tie? I've never even fucking... Is that a tie? <laughs> Yeah, I really don't. I've yeah. never even seen one well, of these. We could before. do a demonstration if you like. Yeah, but go for it. I, feel, I mean, I think it's like this. Have you brought a tie pin with you? <laughs> I feel like I yeah, wear it like that. I think that looks lovely. Although you sort of look like BA cabin crew, but that's fine. 
Do you have The gayest I've ever looked. Mm, it suits you. Honestly, I've had a more, I've had a cock up someone's arse and I've looked less gay than this. <laughs> Tom has got quite an annoying voice. It sounds like a rape alarm, except you don't feel like helping him. <laughs> Larry went to an all-boys Catholic school, but nobody would fuck him, not even the priests, because they all thought he was so pale. He must be the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Tom is a paedophile's worst nightmare. A baby dressed as a lawyer. <laughs> now, Larry, Larry, now, you know, most gays dream of being over the rainbow, but Larry looks like he'd be more at home under the rainbow, injecting himself with drugs. <laughs> Let's go! Oh. Tom doesn't get too upset about what I've said about him tonight. I uh, wouldn't want him to kill himself. Uh, at least I know if Tom was to kill himself, he'd tie the noose in a double Windsor. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, want to feel old? This is what that dead baby from train spotting looks like now. <laughs> Oh, good. Jimmy! Fabulous roast, I mean, really what this is all about. Just, just great. Now, uh, let me just get the... I want to get this absolutely right. So, uh, Larry, you're, you're a top, and Tom, you're a bottom. Actually, I don't know if he's a bottom. I'm just going by instinct. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, Tom, do, do, the, um, do the curtains match the drapes? And by that, I mean, do you, do you also shave your vagina? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, Jimmy. <laughs> Tom, you, you were Attitudes Man of the Year in 1934, weren't you? I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You couldn't look more different. I mean, you really couldn't. I, I mean, you because you look quite well groomed and you look fucking homeless. I mean, it's. Like... <laughs> um, okay. Well, who, who do you have for the win here, Jonathan? I think. I mean, it's so close to me, but I think because I love the dead baby from Train Spotting reference so much, I'm going to give it just by a whisker to Tom. Oh, just Jonathan, by a whisker. So you. close. Jonathan. What's your view? What do you think? I think it's a wonderful portrayal that there are different types of gay men. You know, like, Tom's parents warned him not to come home with boys like Larry, and Larry's parents warned him not to come home with boys. <laughs> I loved you, Tom. I thought you showed a lot of charity, charm, a lot of compassion towards Larry, and he so greatly needs it. <laughs> we were treated to a little pantomime, like, where Tom gentrified Larry. It's like a, a gay remake of My Fair Lady. <laughs> but I did think that Larry was the most brutal. I guess it falls to me. I mean, the jokes were great from both of you. I think the comebacks from Larry, when you put on the cravat and you said, I've looked less gay with a cock in someone, <laughs> was again magnificent. I've got to give it to Larry. Larry, you, you've won this one. Larry wins! Well, I mean, we've got to talk about Joe of the Night. Um, I loved a lot of the jokes that both of you guys did a lot. I loved, as I said, Larry's baby lawyer, you being a paedophile's worst nightmare, really made me laugh. But I'm going with Darren's observation that Tom looked like he got his outfit from Grand Theft Auto was so amazing and so made me <laughs> laugh out loud. So I'm going, to, I'm going to give that one to Darren. Well, let's go with the uh, Grand Theft Auto yes. joke as the joke of the night. <laughs> Well, that's all we have time for. Uh, remember, if you've been offended by anything you've seen tonight, feel free to phone our helpline. The number is 0000, zero, 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 zero fucks given. <laughs> Good night. Warning. There are jokes on tonight's show that might offend some viewers. So if you think you might be upset, please switch over now to Comedy Central Extra. Right.
Right, on with the show. Roast battle is basically the comedy equivalent of slowing down to look at a car crash, only hopefully you're not masturbating right now. <laughs> Just me, OK. Um, <laughs> helping decide our winners tonight are my fellow judges, Catherine Ryan and Jonathan Ross. Catherine Ryan is all woman, from the top of her head to the tip of her penis. <laughs> Catherine Ryan, everyone! <laughs> and joining Catherine is Jonathan Ross! Hello. Jonathan and his wife, Jane Goldman, are a real showbiz power couple. She's responsible for scripting some of the best films of the last ten years, whilst he's responsible for feeding the cat and putting the bins out. <laughs> Jonathan Ross, everyone! Obviously, to be good at roasting, you can't be afraid to be rude. Who's the rudest person you've ever met? I uh, was doing some, uh, yeah, some charity work. You know me. And um, <laughs> it was uh, for the Prince's Trust, and I was invited to one of their palaces, and Prince Philip was there. We're in a line, he comes on to me, and, and he went, oh, and you, oh, I know you. And I went, yeah, well, thank you very much for inviting me. He went, nothing to do with me. I'm surprised they let you in. And he just walked off. <laughs> That's why I don't really envy Meghan Markle, you know? because she has to share an estate with Prince Philip, and he can only barge into your shower so many times and blame it on dementia. Mm. <laughs> Time to welcome the man keeping order. It's the referee that runs the roast. It's Brian Moses! Yeah. Keep it going for Jimmy Carr! He's going for the first battle. Yeah. First up, we have Brennan Reese and Kiri Pritchard McLean. Yeah. Oh. Brennan's very pretty, but very stupid. <laughs> but my hope is that the audience are like, you're a bit of a prick. In the battle, I'm just going to be dead honest. She's fat as fuck. That's the best thing about roasting a fat comedian, is uh, the crackling. He looks really young for his age. I look like I've given birth to Brennan. I'm from England and Kiri comes from Wales, or as she likes to call them, Mum and Dad. It's the Mac versus the Tank. Go crazy for Brennan Reese. Rule one, five jokes each. Rule two, nothing's off limits. So for physical contact. And rule three, remember, black is slimming. So I guess I'm not standing close enough to carry. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you want to see go first? I mean, that's, that is quite the outfit. <laughs> but Brendan, you look like a kid's TV presenter who only joins CBBS for the pussy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we'd better let Kiri go first before Jeremy Kyle comes here and demands his guest back. <laughs> All right, Kiri, you ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Good yeah. So, Brennan once told me on a road trip to a gig that he once sucked his own dick. <laughs> <laughs> We've all tried, mate. We've all tried. You're living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got two inches down, so all the way to the balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what a bit of self-belief can do when your dad screaming you from behind a camcorder. <laughs> Kiri knows all about cock. Like, she's never paid for a taxi before. Just like, oh. So... <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, she's been with that many guys. I bet her fanny looks like Chewbacca with a cleft palate. <laughs> I think Brennan's really fit, but in a really white way. He's like a uh, UKIP eugenics programme that ran out of funding halfway through. <laughs> He's so smart. 
being cute, isn't he? He's like a Butlin's red coat if Germany had won the war. <laughs> Kiri Pritchard McLean, I'd love to say you've got the body of a bowling ball, but you don't, because you can only fit three things inside a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> and all those sequins, they don't do you any favours. That's actually clusters of a jazzle, which is the technical name for sequins on a cunt. <laughs> I look great. <laughs> I think I look good. I tried really hard for this. I ate a tapeworm in preparation for it. <laughs> That's what I call it when I suck Brennan off. <laughs> Brennan's had the most amazing life, right? So Brennan's mum was a trapeze artist and he grew up in the circus, but now it's his girlfriend that comes once a year. <laughs> better than having a boyfriend who comes once you've put your top back on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kiri is actually a feminist, which I think is dead cute. She's a big supporter of hashtag me too, which is quite surprising because by the look of you, you don't look like you want to be involved in any sort of movement. <laughs> toured a comedy show about his nana dying of dementia. <laughs> I'm not sure she had dementia. I just think he's a forgettable prick. <laughs> Honestly, there are girls who've been on dates with him. They don't remember anything. I remember that he bought me a drink and then I just woke up here. <laughs> Kiri is a big fan of serial killers. On the circuit, she's known as Myra Double Chinley. Fuck uh... <laughs> you. He literally looks like a serial killer in a boy band. Fucking Fred Westlife. That's what you look like. <laughs> Luckily, Kiri is never, ever going to get murdered because there's not a patio big enough to bury her under. <laughs> 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 and Kiri, <laughs> um, I thought that was that was absolutely fantastic. I mean, a couple of jokes there really stood out for me. Uh, the sucking your own dick thing I thought was over. I thought we'd enjoyed yeah. the whole of that, and then it turned out mm. his dad was filming on a camcorder. Yeah. <laughs> what a bloody treat for everyone! <laughs> uh, Jonathan, what, what did you think? Uh, I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I loved the two in them fighting, and there were times when I felt like I shouldn't be enjoying it, but I was when you went down that serial killer kind of to and fro. <laughs> I enjoyed it in the same way, like, you know when you're watching Grand Design and they don't get panning permission and you fucking love it? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's wrong, but I just loved it. Another contender for line of the night. Shirley was uh, describing her, her vagina as uh, a Chewbacca with a cleft palate. Nice. <laughs> I mean, that is some roast battle poetry right there. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, listen. No matter how promiscuous you are, I just want to destroy the myth that your vagina gets looser. I can still smuggle an entire bottle of wine into any school recorder concert. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan, you know, I do think that you're adorable. Um, but Kiri, you look great as well. Like, this really is a good look. I wish I had the full jumpsuit. I'm not joking. You look absolutely amazing. Uh, it's so fucking yeasty down here, mate. You do not want that. <laughs> oh, well, then I'm Making bread down there. That's what I'm doing. Brandon, you know, Kiri's not fat, but I understand that you had to choose something and say she's fat for a lot of these really great jokes, even though I had to suspend a lot of my beliefs because she's not fat. She's not thin. <laughs> <laughs> He's not giving up. He's not letting that go. Oh. Jonathan, who do you have for the win? I'm going to give it to uh, Brennan for the Chewbacca uh, with a cleft palate, which was beautiful, <laughs> and three fingers in a bowling ball. I think I'm going to have to give it to you. <laughs>
It really went back and forth for me. But then, Brennan, with your rebuttals and stuff, you're very quick. Just mm. by a hair, I'm going to give it to Brennan. It was, I think, incredible writing from you, Brennan, this evening. I think you really, you really brought it. But in terms of, you know, performance, you had some great jokes, Kerry. If I could call it a draw, I would, but I can't because I'm not that kind of guy. Brennan for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a break now, whilst I take a moment to contemplate the fact that my actual job is judging which of these pricks is the best at calling the other a cunt. See you in five. <laughs> Warning, there are jokes on tonight's show that might offend some viewers. So if you think you might be upset, please switch over now to Comedy Central Extra. Welcome back to Roast Battle. I'm very lucky to be the host of this show. The only person who presides over more abuse is the Pope. Uh, okay, who's ready for another battle? Alex's weaknesses are numerous. Looks, brains, socially. I mean, we'd be here all day. He's got the body of a Greek god. He's very handsome. But mentally, not the brightest. Do you ever play fetch with a dog and you pretend to throw a stick and the dog just goes and you hide the stick behind your back and it looks back at you? I bet you could probably do that with Joel. Right, be like, Joel, look at Instagram model. And then you look, where? It's not natural for me to be a horrible person. Then they said, oh, it's going to be against Alex Edelman. And I was going, I'm going to fuck this cunt a new butthole. Give it up for Joel Dolby! guy Catherine's fucking, and this is the guy she thinks about while she fucks this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, who do you want to see go first? Um, well, I'd, I'd be interested to let Alex go first, because maybe he could explain why he looks so fucking pleased with himself the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? I'm sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right! <laughs> Joel, you're a lot like Jesus. You look like him. Your fans are fucking idiots. <laughs> and tonight you're gonna get killed by a Jew. <laughs> Alex, you are dating mother of one, Catherine Ryan. And uh, after tonight's roast, she's gonna have two destroyed twats. <laughs> so, Alex, the reason that you get nominated for awards is the same reason you're on this show. You're fucking someone on the panel. <laughs> I am dating Catherine Ryan, so unlike you, I've been at least one funny thing. <laughs> Joel did 100 gigs in 24 hours this year at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. 100 gigs in 24 hours. I'm from Boston, but Joel, that is a true marathon bombing. <laughs> Alex, yeah, I, you're from Boston, and I was, genuinely, I was saddened to hear about the, the marathon bombing, but I was even sadder to find out that you weren't there. <laughs> like, it was... <laughs> Alex looks like a, an ugly version of all of the Beatles. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit. <laughs> Thank you, Jack Scheidhall. <laughs> Joel's very handsome. Joel's very handsome, or at least that's how all of the victims describe him to police. <laughs> Alex, uh, is it true, in the Bible, when Samson loses his hair, he loses his strength? 
I think that's right. Uh, was all of your comedy in your foreskin? Because... <laughs> Last joke! Joel's dad is a farmer and he's really disappointed in him because he was hoping that his son would grow up to be a funny comedian. <laughs> Joel, you could be a funny comedian, but you don't want to be. You want to be a presenter. If you met a genie and he gave you three wishes, you'd use all of them to be more like Joe Swash. <laughs> if anyone... If anyone knows Alex, uh, you'll all know that he is a sociopath who is desperate to be famous, honestly. He would have told the Nazis where Anne Frank was to get a spot on Live at the Apollo. Like, it is... <laughs> <It's insane. laughs> I'm desperate to be famous? That's the pot calling the kettle leaking his own sex tape to get more views on the internet. <laughs> It was, it was pretty good, some pretty good dance that Catherine, what do you think? It was just a great roast. It was like a Judd Apatow film about a hot guy helping a nerd get pussy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I thought you both had some great jokes tonight. You both are two of my favorite comedians, regardless of who I'm fucking at any given time. <laughs> wow, Alex, you just be described as one of her favorite comedians. Yeah. <laughs> that has got to her, doesn't it? I'm just pleased to break the top ten, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and Catherine, we've known each other for a long time, and uh, I call her the, uh, the school chair because she's plastic, got a massive hole, and works best on all fours, so... Uh, <laughs> my favourite. It's the thing we do for each other. That's why Alex is fucking someone with two Netflix specials and you're fucking an Instagram model. Mm. <laughs> oh. That's it. So, I mean, obviously, you're slightly partisan here. You have a dog in the race, so to speak. <laughs> I'll go first, yeah. And then there's no, like... It... You'll come first. I will never come first. I definitely... I... <laughs> You'll finish yourself off, I would imagine. <laughs> While watching Jowl on the internet, yeah. I'm paying for my own date. <laughs> Do you give him the money before the date so he can pretend to pay for dinner? Is I that how that works? literally bought the clothes that he's wearing, but... Wow. <laughs> literally. <laughs> for real. Can I, ask, oh, it's so nice. can I ask about the... Because he looks like he's got two club feet. Did you buy those shoes? <laughs> no offence, Alex, you look as if you should have calipers on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the rose portion for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, who do we have for the win? What, what do you think? Alex, you're really smart and you're really funny, so despite all the other things, I really like that about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I love you both very much. Joel, you had a great roast tonight. I'm voting for Alex. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go to Jonathan. What do you, what do you think? I like yeah. it. It was very satisfying. It's like when you meet a vegan with a cold. You know, and you feel weird. <laughs> <and something. laughs> Man, it's so close. I don't know. I loved... Uh, Alex's stuff made me laugh a lot in the moment, but looking back at it, I think Joel's stuff, I really like the Ugly Beetle stuff. I really like the Anne Frank line. I think I'm going to go to Joel, but just by a whisker, because, Alex, you were amazing, but I'm giving it to Joel. Yeah. Yeah. I think... I mean, Joel did have a great line in there. He, uh, the, the line, um, he's a sociopath who would uh, tell the Nazis where Anne Frank is to get famous. That was great. I that thought it was, was amazing. And especially coming from you, a man clearly desperate to be famous, <laughs> was doubly funny for me. I think I'm going to go with Joel. Joel! I tell you what, well, I actually thought Alex was better, but I thought you were definitely going for Alex, so I was giving Joel one out of fucking pity. I'll be honest. <laughs> but I would never tell anyone. <laughs> I fuck Alex for the same reason. <laughs> I was fucking close, but unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> As with everything else in your career, swing and a miss, Alex. Swing and a yeah, miss. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, we've got to talk about jokes of the night. Now, I've got a clear uh, contender for this. Have you? Well, I think the, the joke earlier describing uh, Kiri's vagina as uh, looking like Chewbacca with a cleft palate. <laughs> 
Uh, you know what? I like that. I really like Kiri's line about him being able to suck his own dick. It was only two inches long, which we all enjoyed up to that point. And then she knocked it out of the park by pointing out that his father was recording on the camcorder. So I'd go with that one. And I concur with Jonathan because he's written down autofellatio. Autofellatio. <laughs> autofellatio has it. So joke of the night goes to Kerry. Well, that's all we've got time for. Remember, on Roast Battle, we're professionals. Please don't try this at home. Actually, thinking about it, you probably don't have enough room to try this at home. Not with the size of your mum. Good night. <laughs>
you are looking very good for your age, but I think it might be the all boys boarding school because skin looks incredibly youthful when it's coated with a cocktail of your own tears and teenage cum. <laughs> I mean, Lauren, by that logic, you must have taken most of your semen on your chest because your tits look about 12. <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> uh, Lauren, to be fair to her, she's battled some troubles in her life. She suffers from uh, body confidence issues, anxiety and depression, obviously. <laughs> is essentially redundant for me. Why do I have to be here roasting her? Her own brain does it to her every single day. <laughs> and to be fair, it's so bad, the only thing smaller than her self-esteem is her bra size. <laughs> oh, shut up. Maybe you could take some of the padding from my bra and use it to fill the silence when your fucking jokes don't land. <laughs> uh, Tom's dad used to be the head of all of the UK armed forces. So that means he oversaw the troubles in Ireland and he put the troops in Iraq. So all I'm saying, guys, is I've got quite a heavy period right now and your dad has still got more blood on his hands than I've got in my pants. <laughs> Yes, we could nickname your pants the Troubles, couldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because your dad's in them a lot. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Privileged white boy like me. He's had everything handed to him on a plate. And you're right. Normally by one of Lauren's family for minimum wage. <laughs> context, my father was in charge of the fourth largest military in the world and fought off multiple terrorist attacks. Lauren's father is in charge of the trolleys at Asda. <laughs> and he's still fighting off a domestic abuse charge. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, they really reacted like that could be true. <laughs> it's because my family aren't wealthy enough to pay to make those things go away. <laughs> Tom legit lives in the Tower of London. He is so privileged, he's the only person I know who cuts up his fair trade cocaine with a Waitrose loyalty card. <laughs> Being such a high profile army child, Tom's had to undergo um, extensive kidnap training, which was a fucking waste because his parents sent him to boarding school at the age of six. He's been single for eight years. Take a fucking hint, no one wants you. <laughs> Um, Lauren has got herself a posh new boyfriend. By posh, I think she means he keeps his pinky extended while he's trying to fist her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, trying. <laughs> <laughs> Last joke! <laughs> so, um, Tom once got pulled over, breathalyzed and arrested for drink driving, which I think we can agree for someone of his uh, pedigree that is shameful disgusting and embarrassing, but a refreshing change for Tom to be made to blow something in a man in uniform and it not be one of his dad's mates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dad's in. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren is one of my best friends in comedy. Uh, she's awesome. She is a uh, petite, working-class, northern female and the perfect example of our comedy industry neglecting actual talent for ticking boxes. <laughs> Mind you, she's had a lot of practice ticking boxes with her mum down the job centre. <laughs> and given some of her lifestyle choices, I won't be surprised if the next box she fills will probably be a coffin. <laughs> I hope they fill it better than those shit tits fill your bra. <laughs> Here we go, more 
Jason. Tom Horgan. Come on over, you two. That was brilliant. Jimmy! I thought that was just fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, from two different worlds colliding there. Um, Catherine, what do you think? I mean, it's really difficult with Tom. Like, ah, uh, the breeding. Like, my mind doesn't want to fuck you, but my ovaries keep reminding me that you could get our kids into really good schools. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren I've known for a really long time, and she's done well to take the edge off her accent. When I met her, I thought I was talking to an Inuit. So, <laughs> two really great roasts, but for me, the winner is Lauren. Jonathan, what did you make of this? I, I thought it was great. I tell you what I loved. I loved the way Tom owned his privilege. He knew that you were going to go there, Lauren, and he was ready for it. He absorbed it. He even spoke about it. It still makes you a posh twat, but still, you owned it. <laughs> it was amazing. Do you really live in the Tower of London, or you did for a brief period? Uh, no, no, I, I do at the moment, yeah. I thought I could run for my privilege, but I've decided, like my parents' property, I'm going to own it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know they don't own the Tower of London, yeah. right? Well, we're in talks. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Jonathan? Who have you got the win? I'm going with Lauren. I thought she just aged you out there. She was just... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I thought you both had brilliant lines. I thought you were both really fun. And really good comebacks, just so quick. I thought it was... It was kind of, you know, a win for, a win for roast battle, really. But, Lauren, you've got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lauren Patterson wins! Tom and tell your dad, head of the armed forces, <laughs> that the only battle you've ever been in was this, and you lost. <laughs> okay, who's ready for another battle? <laughs> Let's get Brian up here. Brian Moses. Dame Baptiste and Simon Broadkin. So here's how it's going to go down. Think of Dane as an innocent black man and me as a police officer. I'm going to beat him so fucking bad and he's going to claim it was all a miscarriage of justice. He's short, he's posh. A few BCs have skipped over him. That's a great start. Simon should fear uh, me holding up a, a mirror to him. The mirror will probably have no reflection, just based on his uh, impact on the comedy industry. I'm not worried about how this battle's going to go down. Even if I do lose, I'm Jewish, and my people control the whole world. Show some love for Dave Baptiste! And Simon Broadkin! Oh, I love you. <laughs> Here are the rules. Rule one, it's five jokes each. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, keep it short. No offense, Simon. <laughs> Jimmy, who do you want to see go first? Uh, Simon spent years developing the character uh, Lee Nelson. Well, I say developing the character. You bought a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Please congratulate all your writers on that one. Ooh. Is it too late to get the tracksuit and the hat? <laughs> All right, Simon, you're up first. Are you ready? I'm ready, baby. Are we ready? <laughs> you know, Dane, I was worried I was going to look white next to you, but then I saw Jimmy's veneers. <laughs> the only thing whiter than Jimmy's teeth is your fan base. It's nice to see you wore some uh, cool trainers. I didn't know Nike made shoes for landmine victims. Uh... <laughs> Simon is known for his crazy pranks. I know you're all wondering. He does all these crazy pranks. How does he get away with it? Being white and posh and being anonymous really helps. Uh... <laughs> It's like your modern day Jeremy Beadle. Instead of the hand, it's just your whole body. So. <laughs> Thank you, Dane. Um, that was 15 minutes well spent. 
Um, Dane's parents are from the Windrush generation, so even if Dane were to own me tonight, he will never, ever own one of these. <laughs> Jimmy is half Caribbean, right? Your money lives there. <laughs> Simon, I, I am Jamaica. Say my name in a Jamaican accent. Jamaica. <laughs> Thank you, writers. <laughs> uh, so, Simon Bodkin is also known as Lee Nelson. A, uh, yeah, that's one person. That's probably your wife. <laughs> But well, for those of you who don't know, Lee Nelson was a character Simon created that kind of talked black. So it's kind of like, you know, if the Beastie Boys all spunked into a cup and then put it in a microwave. <laughs> and like the Beastie Boys, there's only two thirds as entertaining as he should be. <laughs> then maybe, um, maybe you should try doing a character called Funny Black Comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I think you already tried that, Simon. because I wear a hat in it. <laughs> Let's go! Jimmy, can I borrow your writers for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Last joke. OK, here we go. First of all, I might be a tiny, short, little Jew who's made his career out of putting a cap on my head, but that hasn't stopped me from fucking your twin sister up the ass. <laughs> and um, as her twin, I hope you felt it every time then. <laughs> you know, even with all my cum dribbling all over her face, her chin still looked less ridiculous than yours does now. <laughs> I uh, did a bit of research because I wanted to find out what the surname Brodkin meant. And I uh, found that it's an ancient Yiddish word for a number of things. You know when you have a circumcision? In some cases, when they uh, leave the foreskin and throw away the person, it's called a Brodkin. Let's hear it for Dan Baptiste! It's Simon Brodkin! Fuck it out, fellas. Come on over, come on over, come on over here. This way, this way, this way, this way. All right. All right, judges, who'd you like, Lee Nelson or Trevor Nelson? <laughs> I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thought that was genuinely a little bit tense at times, and I, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> but Catherine, what are you making? Okay, Simon, yes. you are very brutal. You cussed his white fan base. You cussed his mom. You cussed his slutty twin sister. <laughs> Dane brought out all those pranks. I really enjoy the pranks. Um, did you get beat up by Kanye West's team? <laughs> it was Glastonbury. They said, uh, don't do that again. Ah, oh. <laughs> good. Catherine, we are talking about a posh white guy. They're not going to touch him. I mean, <laughs> do you know who I am? We don't, sir. Of course we don't. But uh... <laughs> let me just get that chip off your shoulder, Dave. Oh. Put it under your foot so you can be taller. <laughs> I think Dane's rebuttals really stood out tonight. Um, everything he had, something coming back, is very quick. And so for that reason, my winner is Dane. Um, Jonathan, what do you do? I would say if I had to give it to someone, certainly I would give it to Dane. But I think, Simon, you picked it up and you made it work in the direction that I didn't think it was going, so I liked that a lot, but also Dane was better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. It must be weird for you being on a show where you have to let the guest speak for this long. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not even listening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, this is your first time appearing on television as yourself. I think you're an incredible performer. I've seen all of your TV shows. I love them. And I think you were really, really fucking funny. That said, Dane for the win. Hey! 
OK, let's talk jokes of the night. What do you think, Jonathan? Oh. Uh, my favourite joke of the night was yours when you talked about the vodka tampon at the beginning of the show, but I don't <laughs> think you're eligible <laughs> for joke of the night. I'm uh, very happy to give myself joke of the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's when you think you know Jimmy. He comes out with vodka tampon. Yeah. Where's he been? What's he been up to? Bloody Mary. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Joke of the night. That can be it. Let's do that's the joke of the night. That's the joke of the night, Well, that's all we've got time for. But turn over now for Roast Battle Extra, where Joe Swash will be stuffing stinging nettles up a ginger kid's bum bum. You won't want to miss it. Good night. <laughs> Right on with the show. If you've never seen Roast Battle before, imagine a warm-hearted show that tries to make society a better place. Well, we're the ones asking that show why it's such a massive bender. <laughs> Helping decide our winners tonight are my fellow judges, Catherine Ryan and Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Catherine Ryan. I'm not saying Catherine's had a lot of plastic surgery, but she used to be an adorable Chinese boy. <laughs> You got me for a good price. <laughs> Happy <Good> morning, everyone. <laughs> and joining Catherine is, of course, Jonathan Ross. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Jonathan Ross, finally, in answer to the question, what would it look like if a bloodhound melted? <laughs> I mean, first of all, doesn't Jimmy look well, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know. He looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, where's... Hang on. on, hang on a second. Well, Where's this going? I know you just came back from a world tour. He's been visiting his bank accounts, but it really, you look amazing. <laughs> Jonathan Ross, everyone. Okay, before we get on with our first battle, time to welcome the man keeping order. It's the referee that runs the roast. It's Brian Moses. Yeah. <laughs> Take over Jimmy Carr, please! Yeah. Okay, he's ready for a battle. Yeah. All right, first up we have Tom Lucy and Nigel Arms. Yeah. The main difference between me and Nigel is that Nigel is Asian and I'm not. He's from Guildford, so he's probably never talked to an Asian person without ordering anything. I know he's a closeted gay guy. He's open for all the biggest names in comedy, Michael McIntyre, John Bishop, but I think he's just trying to find an older male company. I think Nigel is a man with far too much confidence. I intend to knock that out of him pretty aggressively. Give it up for Tom Lucy! I always want to see Sam Smith fight Jackie Chan. <laughs> Jimmy, who do you want to see go first? I think Tom should go first because I want to see him get uh, Chinese burn. <laughs> <laughs> you ready, Tom? Yeah, let's do it. Are we ready? Yeah! <laughs> Nigel's only here because he saw a microphone and thought this was karaoke. <laughs> My grandfather actually fought in the Korean War, so it's comforting to know that my family has gunned down 50 of Nigel's relatives. <laughs> I'm not even Korean, I'm Malaysian. <laughs> so, green curry, red curry, mate. Tom, you look like someone who got through three quarters of a sex change operation, but then couldn't afford the final course of treatment. <laughs> and now you have the perfect face for morning after pill adverts. So I actually uh, found something in um, Nigel's dressing room. It's a, it's a fortune cookie. <laughs> <laughs> 
just quickly sort of, um, sorry, one second, Nigel. You're a cunt. <laughs> Nigel is a pretty strange character, but then you would be too if you grew up in the waiting room of a massage parlour. <laughs> when my friends come round, my mum makes tea. When Nigel's friends come round, they get a full body rub down and then whacked off under a towel. <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, that reminds me, mate, give that to your dad, will you? <laughs> Tom is single because there isn't a still in denial category on Grinder. <laughs> You're so far into the closet, even the Thai cave boys are like, man, he's not coming out. <laughs> White boys going down, man. <laughs> Here's a little fun fact about Nigel. Nigel spends three hours a day at the gym, right? And sometimes longer if one of the other cleaners is on holiday. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows this, but Nigel uh, talks in his stand-up about buying his wife a vibrator. Um, but she actually had it modelled on my dick because uh, I make her wetter than the crash site of that Malaysian aircraft. <laughs> A stereotype joke that's actually accurate. <laughs> Pretty good. Tom, your parents are really racist and super right wing people. Where do they meet? OKKKK okay, Cupid? <laughs> Why don't you go back to where you came from, Tom? Chernobyl. <laughs> Last joke! Um, when Nigel was a child, he used to play catch with his mum. He would stand at the edge of the stage and catch the ping pong ball she shot out of her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, uh, which is actually a lot harder than it sounds because she can do a spin serve using her clit. <laughs> oh. At least I've seen a vagina, Tom. <laughs> Your mom's pussy so loose, I've caught basketballs from her. <laughs> Tom, you had to come out to your parents as straight. Imagine that disappointment to find out that the only son is a liar. <laughs> you called getting bukkake by eight men a spa day. <laughs> your face has been cummed on by so many men, even your hairline is trying to escape from it. <laughs> no! Keep it up with John Wilson! Hold it up! Hold it up. Hold it up. Yeah, I did. What do you think of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Sexuality? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, OK, I just want to do a little fact check on this. Uh, Tom, you're 22, right? Yeah. And I just, can I ask your age? Because uh, I remember when I was, like, 13, 14, I tried to grow a moustache, it didn't really work out. <laughs> 27. Oh, so some sort of hormonal imbalance. <laughs> you're really 27 years old, Nigel. Yeah, man. Fucking hell. <laughs> I thought you were about 40. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Not everyone's hair recedes so young. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, you did very well, Tom Lucy. A really funny comedian. But you, you little crazy bitch Asian. <laughs> I feel like you did a great job. I feel like you ground Tom's white penis into a regrowth serum that we could all enjoy. <laughs> What do you think, Jonathan? Nigel, you're amazing. I've got some great stuff in there. I love the fact that, I mean, you pushed back uh, when, he was in, when he came at you and you said, well, at least I've seen the vagina. That was nice. I enjoyed that very much. But what's going on with the fucking voice, Tom? I mean... <laughs> do you want to talk about fucking voices, Jonathan? <laughs> I 
thought it was very, very funny. I loved your opening with he's only here because he thought the mic it was karaoke. I love the uh, Thai cave boys, though, that you shot back with, that they, he was so far in the closet. The fortune cookie bit as well, because it was so... Yes. It's like, OK, I'm going to bring out a prop. And normally people bring out a prop, it's a little bit eggy, and it goes on too long, and then the punchline was just on the nose. <laughs> it was a very short ideas meeting. What if I just call him a cunt? Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> yeah. I think Tom's got it. I would go with Tom as well, I feel. I have Thank to go with Tom, although you were very funny. I mean... I would have called him Drock. The boys picked Tom. Congratulations, Tom. Congrats, well done. <laughs> Tom, you're the winner. Go win! <laughs> OK, who's ready for another battle? And Johnny Vegas. I prepared by sitting in Phil's house for like three weeks, just watching him. I disguised myself as a couch, but he's so self-involved, didn't even know I was there. He sat to me one night and, and, and masturbated. I only fear that Johnny won't make it to the end of the battle. I think with the heat of the, the, the lights, the stress, I think this could be the night we're losing. Give it up for Phil Ellis! The Battle of the Weekend Dads. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you want to see go first? Well, I think before we get into this, we've got to say, uh, Johnny Vegas, uh, you look fabulous. <laughs> I mean... There's, he does. There's a little bit of weight loss there, and I, I think we can all agree, too little, too late, but bloody well done. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you're a national treasure. This is, I presume, some sort of failed snooker ace? This is amazing. <laughs> I'm a good man. I think we should probably let, um, let Johnny go first before his heart gives out. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Yeah. Thank you! It's a tough one, this, because it's like picking on an underdog. <laughs> I'm very glad that you're here because it means we must be 500 feet from a school. <laughs> because, uh, let's be honest, mate, you look like somebody who's just very eager to give evidence in the murder of a child case. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you have lost loads of weight, which has fucked the majority of my jokes. <laughs> oh my. You've lost the weight but kept the skin. Hanging around your neck, your chin looks like a serial killer's washing line. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you look like a smaller version of you should be sat on your shoulder, arguing with another version of you on your other shoulder, dressed as an angel, <laughs> trying to explain to you why it was all right to kill that hooker and dump it in a stick. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you're incapable of loving women. <laughs> oh, Johnny, you've lost weight. <laughs> You've not lost enough for the Tom Cruise jacket, by the way. Johnny! Where it is? It's my Sh turn! Shut up! <laughs> this is what he's like! Hey, Johnny! We've also not worked together on stage before! <laughs> Johnny! <laughs> you have lost loads of weight. You'll have to get yourself a new wardrobe now. Hey, it's a good job your wife left. You've got a spare one.
genuinely hurt it. Really painful. Yeah, that's the thing about working on relationships, Phil. You don't work on them, you trample on them, <laughs> and then hope nobody finds the fucking bones. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, yep. you look like a criminology student who failed his exams and ends up running the student bar. <laughs> You're like a 70s detective. <laughs> look at the flowers. You wouldn't even put them on a fucking grave, would you? <laughs> <laughs> and look at the shoes. I mean, how big a penis do you want to pretend you've got? <laughs> <laughs> look at him. You should only be allowed to wear shoes that big if you drive a car where the doors fall off. <laughs> and you put out fires with confetti. <laughs> Johnny, you've achieved so much in your career. You were nominated for the Perry Award, you've won numerous comedy awards, you've been on TV and films, and yet the only thing people really remember is that you said the word monkey a lot in a northern accent. <laughs> oh, that's where I know it's from. And the thing is, at this point, I was going to pull out the monkey. Turns out that's what they gave me because the rights for the monkey are too expensive. It's cheaper to get you on it than the fucking woolen monkey. The tea back work. The tea leaves do circulate more easily. <laughs> Seriously, you're going to criticise me on relationships? Phil, what has nine years of your stand-up set been about? Say your name. Leanne. Leanne! <laughs> and where did she go, Phil? She moved in with a builder called Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> she moved in with anyone but you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on joke three. <laughs> hey, Johnny. <laughs> if I could go back in time and talk to the young Phil and say one day he'd be hanging out with his comedy hero, which you are, oh. I bet that young Phil would have thought that it would be a lot more exciting than the reality. <laughs> The most exciting thing about Johnny is his name. It's not even his, his real name's Michael Pennington. Shut up. <laughs> it's, it's a tax a, thing. It sounds. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Your name sounds like a bloke who should be knocking on someone's door to let them know he's moved into the neighbourhood. <laughs> Got you. And that was less like a roast battle. That was like walking into an AA meeting. <laughs> and things had kicked off. So you're friends in real life. Phil used to drive a forklift and you met Johnny getting him out of the bath? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Jimmy, it was a jacuzzi and you were there and it was at your house. <laughs> Let's not bring up your undersized tennis court. <laughs> Just call my tennis court undersized. <laughs> it's a fucking regulation size court, Johnny. You went too fucking far. <laughs> I love looking at you two together. It looks like you could make a gay porn version of Only Fools and Horses. <laughs> When Johnny comes out, we all know Johnny Vegas is going to be amazing, because he's amazing, but, Phil, I thought you were amazing as well. You were super funny, and I loved the... <laughs> I loved the way you were doing that. Hey, Johnny! Hey, Johnny! That was great. That was a, a great piece of some very funny... But, Johnny, there's only one Johnny, and I love the fact that sometimes you go in an area you think, and, and as is typical of him, he took you off into a whole other area that you didn't expect, and that's what I love about Johnny Vegas. So, Phil, I hope you'll forgive me, but I'm giving it to Johnny tonight. <laughs> Johnny, you are... 
you're, you're one of the funniest men I've ever met, Johnny. I mean, you can do no wrong in my eyes. But uh, because I've never seen Phil before, and because he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with you on this, I've got Phil for the win this evening. I thought we should play <laughs> Catherine, I think it's, uh, it's quite fitting that you've got to decide which deadbeat dad to give it to. <laughs> Yet again in your life. <laughs> I wish I could give it to all the deadbeat dads. <laughs> I'm just pleased. Nice to see you again, Catherine. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it your ass <laughs> Sorry. Can we just can we just clarify what just happened there? There's the boots near the studio. <laughs> <laughs> He's a 70s sex pest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoyed both roasts very much. Phil, I think you're very talented, very funny. Johnny Vegas. Vegas, because booking you is always a gamble. <laughs> I think... <laughs> 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 you have always been an absolute inspiration and a gentleman to me in this industry. I thank you for all your guidance, support. Johnny's the winner. Oh. Wow. Johnny wins! OK, we've got to pick a joke of the night. What do you think, Jonathan? What's your joke of the evening? Well, I mean, oh I thought Johnny, of course, was amazing. Uh, Phil, you were fabulous. But I'm going to go back. Early on, Tom defeated Nigel, and I think that was the right decision. But Nigel came out with some great lines, and one mm. stayed with me when you were pointing out that Tom, who clearly is gay, is so <laughs> deeply in denial that even the Thai cave boys were saying he's never coming out. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's give it a Nigel. Show yeah. what do you think. Go 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 Well, that's all we've got time for tonight, but remember, it takes fewer muscles to smile than it does to frown, and even fewer muscles to call someone a twat. Good night, twats. <laughs>
I imagine Lloyd's gonna go out there and bang on about how I'm a child, but he's just jealous because he's got like four years left to live. Gentlemen, here are your rules. Rule one, it's five jokes each. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, remember, it's not over until Lloyd puts on a wig and sings. <laughs> Jimmy, who do you want to see go first? Uh, well, I mean, this, I'm, I'm looking forward to these two. You look like a before and after, but not from a diet from some sort of wasting disease. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we should let the girl from Star Wars go first. <laughs> Reese, are you ready? I'm ready. Are we ready? Well, what can I say about Lloyd that hasn't already been explained to him by a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. You may not know, but Lloyd used to be a choir boy, and he now knows a fact about every cathedral in England. But to be fair, he had a lot of spare time to research while the priest was fucking the slimmer kids. <laughs> yeah. it's, um, it's funny, because it's true. Uh... <laughs> I feel bad for Reese having gone to all this effort to roast me, yet when this goes out on air, his parents won't let him stay up and watch it. Um, <laughs> the only vaguely interesting thing about Reese James is that he only has one kidney. Um, Reese's life is so shit that one of his kidneys decided to fail and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pie on the way here. I mean, of course I had a pie on the way here. Uh, <laughs> and even that had more kidney in it than him. Um, <laughs> Taking the piss because that is something his body can barely do. <laughs> uh, Lloyd is obsessed with fire engines. He collects little toy fire trucks because he's a fat loser. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> but look, it seems weird, but it's no surprise Lloyd loves the fire brigade so much, given that once a week they have to come and cut him out of a tire swing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. They've tried rubbing him in butter and sliding him out, but he just keeps licking it off. <laughs> you might recognise uh, Reese James from Mock the Week. Uh, two years he's been doing it, and the only reason he still gets booked is because the producers genuinely think he's a lesbian. Uh... <laughs> uh, Lloyd did tour support for Jack Whitehall which is great, because now we have an answer to the question, how calorific is Jack Whitehall's jizz? <laughs> <laughs> listen, Lloyd's a great host. He's a great host. He hosts Soccer AM, he hosts a podcast. He even hosts a new Netflix game show. The only thing Lloyd doesn't host is a heart that won't kill him by 45. <laughs> oh. Still got two kidneys, you prick. OK. <laughs> uh, in Rhys James's stand-up, he says he looks like the actor Nicholas Holt. And that is, uh, that is true if Nicholas Holt was playing the role of a young Victorian boy with tuberculosis. Uh... <laughs> Last joke! Uh, people who haven't followed Lloyd for long think he's just got big in the last 12 months or so, but if you've known him for ages like me, you'll know he got big when he started overeating. Uh, <laughs> as a coping mechanism when his dad, quite rightly, abandoned him. <laughs> Lloyd, I don't know what you've seen less of. Your own dad or your own dick. <laughs> Um, I am um, fat, there's no denying that, uh, but Reese is gangly, and the reason why Reese is gangly is because he burns so many calories brushing those fucking teeth. Um, <laughs> it's got a fucked up face, it's almost like his dad had sex with a Tim Burton DVD. Um, <laughs> that DVD being The Nightmare Before Puberty. Uh, <laughs> Judges. I want to do some fact checking before we get into what jokes were best. Uh, first off, did your father abandon you? Yeah, he did, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that was a great joke then. 
What, what do you think, Jonathan? I enjoyed it very much. We, your delivery style I like very much indeed. Is it true that you kind of based yourself on Jimmy Carr when you first started out? Absolutely, under no circumstances is that true. Oh, good, good. <laughs> I thought that's when you, you looked like you've actually had sex, so I assume that was... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm disappointed Lloyd isn't fatter, though, because I was told you were a big fat guy, and you're just like a regular fat guy. And I think, <laughs> I, I think a lot of that material, you deserved a fatter target, and I think you were throwing it at the wrong guy. I mean, you're not fat enough. Thank you very much, Charles. It's OK. <laughs> well, Catherine, what, what did you make of these two? I thought they were both tremendous. I didn't know if it was a competition for who'd be the best IT guy or who would be the best <laughs> roast guy. But I'm very anxious to have either one of you inside me at any point tonight. Um, <laughs> I think Lloyd Griffith is fat. Just everyone's gonna look fat next to Reese. <laughs> I like the Nicholas Holt thing because I couldn't think who he looked yeah. like, and he does look. You look like Nicholas Holt if his teeth had grown, but the rest of him hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I wanted to just quickly ask before we before we get to yeah. who we think has this, uh, Lloyd. I was told you can do amazing, unusual impressions. Uh, yeah. Uh... Someone said you could do. Sellotape. Sellotape, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? Don't look at me like I've got shit on the floor, mate. <laughs> 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 there we go. Well, I, I mean, I'll make no bones. I think, I think uh, you know, Reese is funny, but it turns out you do have our talent. Um, <laughs> Very good on both parts. I mean, I've got Reese for the win here. Uh, what, what do you think, Jonathan? I'm going with Lloyd because he's not as fat as I want him to be. And <laughs> It seems arbitrary, I know, but, that, but it, was, it was so close, something has to decide it. I thought both comedians were so talented. I love them both. But on the quality of joke writing, I think Reese James has edged it. Reese for the win! Yeah. Reese for the win! That's it for part one. Join us after the break or make love to your super fit partner. No, no, I didn't think so. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Roast Battle. Catherine, uh, what can men learn from women about the subtle insult? Yeah, some of the moms on the school run do say to me, like, you're working a lot. Yeah, you, you gotta take all the work while it's coming, don't you? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fuck your man tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're being subtle. We're being very clear. Your mother is Satan. Your dick needs a sat nap. You earn no money. Get it together. Come in your own hair. I'm very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up for another battle? Let's get Brian up here. Brian! Felicity Ward and Reese Nicholson. I've been doing a lot of training for this battle, uh, you know, like a lot of boxing, because it's physical punching, right? Have I understood what this is? The thing I think Reese will try to use against me is my anxiety and depression, but jokes on him because there's nothing that he can say to me that is worse than what I've said to myself. So suck it. I will win this battle. I've won gold for a reason and I'm coming for you, Felicity Ward. This is our first ever All-Australian battle, folks, which means whatever happens, an Aussie is gonna die harder on TV than Steve Irwin. <laughs> All the way from down under, give it up for Felicity Ward! By the way, you both look like Eddie Redmayne from The Danish Girl. <laughs> Here are your rules. Rule one, it's five jokes each. Rule two, nothing is off limits except for physical contact. And rule three, try not to say anything too racist. We're not in Australia right now. <laughs> Jimmy, who you want to see go first? Well, I mean, you, you both look fantastic. Felicity, you, you look like, a, I would say, a flamingo trying to pass herself off as a lesbian. Uh, <laughs> Reese, you look as if... You look like me if I was queer-eyed. Um, <laughs> I've come dressed as a tampon. <laughs> I 
I know it's not your area of expertise, but yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> Felicity, I happen to know you suffer with irritable bowel and anxiety, so I think you better go first before you make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Felicity, are you ready? I'm so ready. Are we ready? <laughs> Reese is actually really lucky because after I tear him a new one tonight, his boyfriend will have a fresh hole to fuck him in. <laughs> Rather than the stretched out rubber band he calls his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dobby the house elf. I, um... <laughs> Let's start with the hair. Felicity, it's called a comb, you frizzy bitch. It... <laughs> You look like a birthing video from the 1970s. Just a strained-looking face crowning through a thicket of matted pubic hair. <laughs> As my father once said to my mother while pointing at me, please, I will pay for that to get chemically straightened. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Reese is a, um, a gay, red-headed bulimic with an anxiety disorder and a lisp, and he couldn't even get into art college. <laughs> I mean, imagine being too fucking dumb to get into art college. <laughs> even Hitler got into art college. <laughs> She does have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, which means even her organs are irritated by her. Uh, <laughs> uh, ba basically, means irritable bowel syndrome means that she shits a lot. She does a lot of shits. In fact, her asshole is the second most overused asshole in show business. Uh, of course, the most overused asshole in show business is Jimmy Carr. But. Uh, <laughs> Reese, uh, Reese has so many interests. He, um, he makes his own brooches and phone cases. Uh, he smokes weed. Uh, he's given himself the nickname Mama Show Business. I mean, wouldn't it just be quicker to tell people you're a cunt? <laughs> Chris actually is so interesting. He even worked on a cruise ship once. And I reckon he worked on a cruise ship for the same reason he sometimes has trouble taking a shit. All the trapped semen. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be honest, I, I missed the end of that one. I, I just got distracted by this loud tick-tock, tick-tock noise coming from your pelvic region. Uh... <laughs> That's pretty funny. Can you say that in my dad's voice? <laughs> I, I, um... <laughs> Felicity is known for being very, very woke, uh, which is a fun way of saying she's a cunt with access to the internet. <laughs> Reese is always so impeccably dressed, and he has, he has that real deer in the headlights look. If headlights are his eyelashes, and deer is the cum gluing them open. <laughs> We've known each other for a long time, and I, we've never talked about this. You actually helped me quite a lot in my life, because when, when I was 24, I'd been bulimic for so long, I had absolutely no gag reflex, and only through watching your television appearances and looking at pictures of you was I able to vomit again. <laughs> Let's go! Um, Reese, when he was a younger man, he's told a story about how he threw up while going down on a guy, combining his two great loves, sucking dick and bulimia. <laughs> as someone who has anxiety and depression and is a mental health advocate, this is very off-brand for me. <laughs> I've met you off stage. I, um... <laughs> Felicity comes from quite a, a, a grim background. She lived in quite a tough part of Australia. She comes from a working-class family, and now she's 38 years old. Felicity Ward is proof that tragedy plus time doesn't always equal comedy. <laughs> Sometimes it's a sad old battle axe standing on stage with a leaky asshole. <laughs> hey, give it up for Felicity Ward! And we stick 
Nicholson. You two, hi there. Jamie, who's you like here? I thought that was just fantastic for, from both of you. I mean, I thought just an exceptional roast, brutal jokes. I mean, uh, come gluing your eyelids open. Let's let's go to our expert. <laughs> If you don't get cummed on long enough to let it dry. <laughs> I keep it fluid. <laughs> Jonathan, what did you think? I thought it was amazing. I think pound for pound, just about the best roast I've seen out here. And I loved you from the moment you came on, because I haven't seen you before. You came on, I thought it's someone's mum from an 80s movie, OK? <laughs> and you walked on, and it's like Dexter's laboratory come to life. I was so excited <laughs> to see Dexter in the Thank you. I love Dexter. Who, who are you? I was big in the 80s, too. <laughs> Can I ask what, what happened after you made Dirty Dancing? Because I never saw you <laughs> in anything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be very, very tough to pick, because really, you've both been fabulous. Um, Jonathan, who have you got for the win? I'm not going to choose one, Jimmy. Go fuck yourself. They were both great. <laughs> Whoa! That's it. I'm saying that. That's all I'm saying. I can't choose. I think because it was Carter for her, Felicity just edged it. Okay. so nice. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of both of you. I think you're really, really funny. And I'm going to say, uh, just because it's out of your comfort zone and you absolutely smash it, I think Felicity for the win. Well, I suppose we've got to talk about joke of the night. I mean, in the earlier roast, we had that incredible line, uh, you've seen less of your dad than you have of your dick. You're bad <laughs> your dick. Yeah. 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 Fabulous. I really liked when Reese said that Felicity reminds him of a 1970s birthing video, you know, yeah. crowning through the pubic oh, hair. Oh, that's, that's the... about as good as it gets, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's a fabulous rose joke. What do you think, Jonathan? I think, you know, hitting him with the abandonment issues with his father early on, and we knew that was true, and then turning it into a dick joke was kind of masterful, so I'll go with you on that one. Yeah, it's a dick joke, it's a dad joke, it's yeah. a fat joke, it's everything <laughs> we ever wanted. <laughs> joke of the night, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That's it for tonight, but until next time, go fuck yourselves. Good night. <laughs>